Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. At the request of a viewer, I have decided to release the AN225 model that I made primarily for the Max spacecraft test. And it isn't really up to snuff as far as I'm concerned. I could do better, but uh, right now I don't have the time to uh, go over it. I have many other things that I would like to do. Uh, but yeah, given recent events, I guess I might as well release it. But it isn't all the pieces you might need. Uh, it is the body, the left wing, the right wing, and the left horizontal stabilizer, right horizontal stabilizer, left vertical stabilizer, and right vertical stabilizer. Uh, everything has little nodes for you to put it on, but the nodes are really small, so you have to be careful. Uh, and the things that are not included are the control surfaces. I'm using the B9 procedural wings procedural control surface supersonic for everything and uh, we do not have landing gear so I'm just using stock landing gear so two sets of two in front there and then a bunch of the two by threes so the six wheel ones we've got three on each side and we also did not have the engines as part of the pack uh, these Progress uh, D18Ts uh, come with advanced jet engines extended, not just the regular advanced jet engines, but advanced jet engines extended, and uh, it modifies the stock engines, as you see. So, yeah, you'll need that as well. Um, it is possible, potentially, to repaint these. I haven't done that, but you could repaint them white. Uh, you could just take the texture, the stock texture, into a, a paint program and just lighten it up, but anyway... Uh, that is an option, but yeah, uh, because there's so much I hadn't done with this model because it was mainly for the Max space plane, I didn't think it was that great to release it on its own, but uh, anyway, somebody requested it, we'll flight test it uh, on its own and then with a load with Max on top, and we'll just make sure it can fly, so let's just go with it. You'll note that it has launch clamps, and that's because like a lot of planes, it tends to want to flop onto its tail or something like not uh, not on its tail It'll, it tends to flip out <laughs> it's a uh, Kerbal glitch so not the most wonderful thing oh it's uh, replenishing fuel that's all right since uh, yeah it's the launch clamps are replenishing our fuel let's just uh, release them should be balanced now and the launch clamps of course have to be placed so that your horizontal stabilizer doesn't hit them and everything Okay, I'll use atmospheric autopilot. We're just on the regular runway here. So we have a light fuel load right now. But the dust cloud really isn't necessary. Oh. Uh, uh, you may need to use wheel steering A. You need to use A to turn it sometimes. While it's slow and the rudders don't have any effect. Right now the rudders have their effect, so we don't need to use wheel steering. Should be able to take off since it doesn't have a load. And yeah, it's off. Oh no, uh... Oh. Okay, well it needed all that runway. And it seemed to need to get up to a pretty high speed even though it doesn't have a load, so... That's suspicious. Note the use of quite a lot of pitch authority. This is, I haven't really refined this. Uh, take a look at how much those are using the elevons. That's a lot, so keep that in mind. It might not be the most refined thing. Now, even with our current uh, fuel load, it says one hour, and that'll be more at higher altitude. The kerosene, as we go up, will be used less, so it has a fairly long duration, and it's got the correct fuel load, more or less. Um, we'll just turn. Otherwise it should be stable. It's just mainly getting off the runway and operating at slow speeds that's going to be a problem. I don't have air brakes on this one right now. Oh, and we didn't use flaps either.
I mean, in flight, as opposed to in the SPH, it doesn't look too bad. Oh, I mean, I would have thought that I would have released it with Max. When I released Max. But, apparently not. I, I don't know. I would have thought that was part of the Max package, actually. I think it'll be safer to go for the shuttle runway for landing. <laughs> uh, to sure about the... Oh, let's... we need to turn harder. We're going too fast now. This could take a long time to slow down. Well, I guess it doesn't take a whole long time to slow down, actually. I've lowered some flaps. You might want to use action groups for that. I have no idea why I did with the IVA view. I must have put, like, the shuttle cockpit in or something. I did not make a custom one. Okay, well, a little bit high here. Ah, uh, it goes all the way up. <laughs> it makes a funny sound like this. Okay, brakes. Oh, oh, oh. It didn't make a sound on touchdown, but we're definitely down. Oh. Ah, uh, we're floaty a bit. Ah. Uh. Okay, I'll just shut that off. All right, well, we've stopped. Okay, well, it took a lot of runway, but that was because I didn't touch down at threshold or anything like that. Let's try it with the Max. Max was released separately. It has this whole decoupler mechanism and all this business, but this is close to the maximum weight that the AN-225 can carry, and we need the kerosene to be underfueled to be able to lift off like this. We'll make sure to use the shuttle runway because I think the default runway is too short. And let's see what happens. Okay, and out here it doesn't replenish the kerosene because this runway isn't like the regular runway. But anyway. There we go. Atmospheric autopilot. Let's add some flaps right away this time. I don't know if that helps or whether it just adds drag. We'll see. And throw up. And again, using A to help with the steering at this point. Me planting the nose down would help too. Uh, uh. Once we get up to about 40 meters per second, it's all right. I don't know, I'll try and rotate and see, but we better be careful. The landing gear configuration also makes it a little bit awkward to lift off. You have to make sure to put it in the right place. Well, it's light on its feet right now, but it's not lifting off just yet. Gain speed. The altitude is deceptive because the runway slopes up. Uh, I'm pulling up as hard as I can, as you can see from the bottom right. Well, we need all of that pitch authority so <laughs> yep and it's certainly taking off at a higher speed than I would like it to but if I increase lift on the wing that can also increase drag which can be inver uh, averse to what we would like mm. 
The problem is that with FAR, it doesn't really take into consideration the curvature of the wings, the aerofoil. The airfoil of the AN-225 is very peculiar, and it's meant for heavy lift vehicles, but, and, you know, vehicles that take off at very slow, well, not very slow speeds, but slower speeds than, say, a rocket. Uh, so, yeah, fair mirror space does not necessarily have an understanding of how that works. I mean, it's better than stock, that's for sure, but that would be a very difficult thing to do anyway. I mean, I'm not dissing firm aerospace for that because it's just really hard at that point. That's what a dedicated flight sim and only the best dedicated flight sim could do for you. I don't think uh, flight uh, Microsoft flight sim really simulates airfoils. I know X-Plane does. But you have to tell it what airfoil you've got. So we'll say that it uh, was going to launch Max, but it decided to abort, and so we'll go around and try and land with it. I think I can retract the flaps now. I don't even know if the flaps helped at all. I doubt it. We're flying at the Cape because it's probably safer. <laughs> Uh, and also it's more scenic. Well, we're really getting up to speed now, flying over to VAB. I've kept it low just for simplicity for landing. As you would expect, it's very nice and stable. It flies like it sorta ought to, it's just that we need a lot of pitch, especially to get off the ground. Some of the annoyances of this is uh, are that the wings are separate pieces. There's a left wing and a right wing because they're not symmetrical like this. So you can't put them in symmetry, which means you also cannot put the engines on in symmetry. You're going to have to put them one at a time and make sure that they're in the right place. You also can't put the surfaces on in symmetry. You're going to have to make sure that they're the same size and put them individually on both sides. Same with the vertical stabilizers and same with the horizontal stabilizers for the control surfaces. So, yeah. It's, it can be annoying, so just a heads up. With the B9 procedural control surfaces though, you can paint them. You can paint them white or whatever, off-white, so that they match the body. I have not done that here yet. Uh, we might be coming in too fast here. Well, maybe some flaps can help slow us down. Using the flaps as air brakes here. Oh, I can't pull up very much. Uh, uh. Okay, brakes. Uh. We're sideways. Uh. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, uh. Uh. Come on, get a hold of yourself. Oh no. We're boating. We need those wingtip wheels that the B 52s have, or the U 2s. Okay. We're stopping now. Oh, I don't have steering. Ah, uh, we're going off. Okay. Right. Yeah. It stopped. No, okay. Stop. Not the best landing ever, but you can work on that. So, I'll make a package out of it. It's not exactly the way I would like it to look, but... Oh, wow, what happened to this side? <laughs> uh, that, that... 
Well, this aileron looks like it's been placed wrong. I just noticed that. Hmm. Um. Yep, I placed that one. Uh, that one tilted somehow. Maybe that caused some problems. Who knows? Let's go back into the SPH. So, yep, like I said, there are flaws and you need to make sure to put these on in... Uh, not in symmetry, but symmetrically, without having symmetry. I must have tilted it on the wrong axis. Well, but I suppose if you really want one, you really want one. So, you'll figure it out. So, uh, the zip will be in the video description and tell me what you think of it. So... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.